uh, apparently they ran into all kinds of problems. Uh, putting a new engine in, this is where I slept. Yeah, Kia is running great. Yeah, <laughs> little did I know, my woes were about to begin. Well, the check engine light did turn on and it started running rough. I don't know if that's something really serious. I don't know if I'm gonna make it. Well, to make a long story short, I took old Kia to the local Firestone, but they couldn't find an immediate solution. After almost two days waiting, I became stranded in Mooresville, North Carolina, much docking at a viewer's home in the path of a major hurricane. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV wherever I want to be, because I'm free in my RV. On the next day, after much waiting, Bridgestone was able to get me a truck, probably the last available truck in the whole state of North Carolina, with the hurricane coming and all that. It was an hour away drive in Gastonia, so I went there and drove it back to Mooresville to pick up Minitini. There's uh, Lake Norman. Of course, there is a great height differential between this truck and old Kia, so I'm gonna have to ask the guys at the Firestone if they can help me adjust the hitch. Might as well take care of uh, my tire problem. They're gonna replace that rear tire and um, off we go. Yeah, you all know I have that one tire that wears out faster than the rest, right? It is going to take me a while to get used to this big truck, but if there is a plus, it is that I can't barely notice I am doing anything at all. So, Tires Plus and Firestone's parent company Bridgestone came through after all, and I'm on the road again. The fate of old Kia? Still uncertain at this point. I think they are going to tow it all the way back to Miami. It's on the road again. I'm kind of tired. I'm going to drive about an hour today and then uh, check this baby out. I'm sure you saw it if you follow me on Instagram at Traveling Robert, but. They got me a huge truck, so um, that's what we're planning on doing for the, now the, the rest of the, the trip. The trip is going to be cut short, by the way. I'm not going to be able to go to Canada uh, because, I, 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 you know, they're, they're towing old Kia back to Miami for some reason instead of just fixing it here. So I'm going to have to return this truck in Miami in two weeks. Well, yes, I was originally going to spend some time in the New England states, even New Brunswick, Canada, but plans change, right? I'm gonna stop here at this friendly Walmart and rest, and check it out! We actually fit into two adjacent parking spaces. Not so big, after all. It barely fits, but it fits. Good morning. I think I got the car set up to my liking now. ETA, six hours and 24 minutes. Let's hit the road. Well, you know how it is when you get a new car for the first time. You have to set up the Bluetooth and the steering wheel, and in my case, the dash camera mount and the phone mount. And I'm still not 100% comfortable, but it'll do. After about half an hour on the road, we arrive in Virginia. I wanted to stop here at the Welcome Center, but the RV section is all taken, because some trucks decided to park in it. There is another whole section just for trucks. Well, I'm kind of bummed out, but isn't this a beautiful drive? And we haven't even really seen the best parts yet, which will be on I-81, I reckon. By the way, Big White here is tackling this long uphill climb like it's nothing. Can't even tell it is towing anything behind, which is quite a change from old Kia.
Hello, everybody. This was one of those uh, uphills where old Kia would have would have struggled tremendously, and this truck didn't even didn't even feel it. I mean, it's a heavy duty. What's it called? Anyways, I, I'm kind of bummed out that I couldn't stop at the Virginia Welcome Center. I was really looking forward to getting a map, but I'm gonna I'm going to Virginia on the way south again, so uh, probably through I-95. So um, I might be able to do it then. Let's take a quick break here, put gas, and continue. Whoops, wrong side. It continues to be a beautiful drive on I-81, which goes along the Appalachian Mountains mostly over earlier roads and paths created by Native Americans, early settlers, and even migrating animals, or so I've heard. Let's make a quick breakfast stop, shall we? My, my sliced ham went bad, but my cubed ham is still good. I put some cheese, lettuce, Thousand Island dressing, and it's a wrap. Well, that was a very simple breakfast, but very satisfying. This truck is a beast. I just floored it back there because I had to pass someone and it was like, vroom, like nothing is back there. Incredible. And by the way, on a sad note, um, it looks like this, my, this inconvenience might uh, shatter my dream of doing the lower 48 by the time I'm 48, although you never know. But um, I have to return the truck to Miami in two weeks. 13 days now. So I'm not going to be able to see Vermont or New Hampshire and Maine, maybe. We'll see. Still very happy to be able to continue on the road and travel. It's a beautiful drive, this uh, Interstate 81. I wish I could stop, you know, and, and smell the mountains, but we'll be back to this area at some point. Now, the goal is Hershey, Pennsylvania, by 3 p.m., maybe 4. To me, I-81 here is a great alternative to I-95, since it doesn't go through any large metropolitan areas, besides being a much more scenic drive. And guess what? We are now in West Virginia. Welcome to West Virginia. Thank you. All right, another state. I think there's a visitor center coming up, so let's go in. Yes, very excited to be back in West Virginia, but unfortunately, like in my previous visit, it is going to be all too brief. Yeah, there are so many places that I was planning to visit here in West Virginia originally, but I don't think it's going to happen now. I continue relentlessly. In about half an hour, we should be crossing into Maryland. A little bit of construction in this area here and not the smoothest of roads. But as we cross the Potomac River, we are now in Maryland. Just a few minutes later, we enter Pennsylvania. So 
of all, the one thing I don't like about Pennsylvania? Toll booths. Way too many of them here in the Northeast, but it is what it is, right? Now, crossing the Susquehanna River into Harrisburg, Pennsylvania's capital. And now we get to pay. It is $5.05 with my four axles, and you know there will be plenty of more tolls in this area. And I know all about the Easy Pass. It would have been a little cheaper and quicker, but I'm on a rental truck, so I didn't want to deal with it. Driving in this part of the country seems somehow more complicated sometimes. Especially after, you know, driving all day. I'm kind of tired, but 15 minutes, I'm gonna be in Hershey. At the, well, in Elizabethtown, at the KOA. Uh, then we'll go to Hershey for the meetup. And uh, let's see what we can do between the rest of today and tomorrow morning. I finally arrive at the KOA and shortly after I get to meet Herbie, aka Red Jaguar. You finally made it. <laughs> I finally made it. This is my wife Mary. How are you? Pleased to meet you. It's a pleasure Robert. likewise. Hi Robert. Yes. I feel like I know you. Wow, you got a pickup. And not just any, any pickup. This is like a, like a monster truck. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a long trip. My name is John. I'm John and Robert. Pleased to meet you. Thank Love you so your much. videos. Oh, thank, Love you. You. thank you. Appreciate it. And he was gracious enough to come. Yeah. Yes, he was. I, was, I, was, I am uh, thankful. I wanted to be here on Tuesday, but you know. Yeah, it wasn't your fault. It, wasn't it was wrong. outside of your control. I know. That's right. That's it wasn't right, outside of your it control. Was, it was outside of my control. Oh well, but Red Jack I'm got him down this end. Be better late than never, right? That's right. You know, so you're going to the show. And tomorrow, to, tomorrow I'm, I'm just. Yeah, he only had much time now. No, I know. If you want, here's the outlay. If you want. Oh, oh thank you. Get a head that's start. Great to know. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, that's what they give you when you get in. But if you got that ahead of time, you can see what's where and what where. Now. I'm going to check it out now tonight yeah. before. Are you going to Maine? I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it to Maine anymore okay. because I have to return this big thing to Miami in two weeks. Oh, that's going to Miami. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Originally, it was going back to, to, to Charlotte. I said, well, from Charlotte, I could always come back. It's yeah. not that much, but, but they wanted to bring it to Miami. Because they're towing old Kia to Miami. For, oh, are they? I don't know why. I guess they don't trust uh, North Carolina mechanics. No, nah, well, corporate, <laughs> corporate office will do yeah, that. Yeah, that's probably what they do. As soon as I arrived in Pennsylvania and I knew I was going to make it to Hershey, I posted on Facebook, let's have a meetup today at Troig's in Hershey at around 6 p.m. So, so I rode with Herbie and his wife, Mary, designated driver, hoping that someone would be there. Check out the Hershey Kisses shaped streetlights. Yeah, I think everything in this town revolves about uh, chocolate. Anyways, here we are. Troig's Independent Brewing. And they have a beer garden. Let's go inside. Is Herbie? As soon as we arrive, we are greeted by Armando Correa, his wife Annie, and his mom Esperanza. I also get to meet uh, Barbara. How are you doing? Herbie's my. My wife Mary. I saw her at the Army show. Annie. Annie? Yeah, Annie, Annie and Mary. The bags. <laughs> <laughs> I <had> busted. <laughs> Actually, meeting viewers on the road is one of the most rewarding parts of this job, of this lifestyle. It's always surprising that they know so much about you and you know so little about them. Del Brown, who was inside at the bar, eventually also came out. And that was the group. A small yet diverse group of people with one main thing in common. Our love for travel. We are 
Eventually, we move inside to get a larger table and something to eat. And it was quite the feast. It was great to hang out and exchange stories from the road. Well, unfortunately, we didn't get to spend much time here in uh, at the KOA, but it was uh, great. There's, there's Herbie. You gotta give me some of that footage. Okay. All right. And uh, anyways, it was great uh, meeting up with uh, with Herbie and and the rest of the gang. Uh, you know, uh, Mr. Correa and uh, Barbara and Dale. Had a great time last night at the at the brewery. I'm really tired, by the way. If I sound uh, tired, it's because I am. It's uh, it's it's starting to catch up to me. But uh, the idea is to to relax tonight in Philly, charge up on my batteries, and uh, and tomorrow we're gonna spend the day in Philadelphia. You know, we'll see as much as we can. I'm not gonna stress, you know, about it and trying to, to show you guys every single, um, you know. Point to place of uh, every, every single attraction, but we'll see some stuff, it'll be fun for sure. Next uh, stop is the Giant Center here in Hershey, Pennsylvania, where we're gonna attend the RV show. I know a lot of you are also gonna be there, and uh, it'll be great to meet up with you guys. Whoa, this road is not the greatest, is it? To Hershey we go. Riding, riding in my RV, wherever I want to be. Cause I'm free in my RV. Yeah, I'm riding, riding, riding. I'm riding in my RV. My RV. Wherever I want to be Cause I'm free in my RV yeah. It is a pretty drive, isn't it? If, perhaps, a little bit more rural than I expected, to be honest. And here we are, arriving at the show. Free parking, by the way. Unless you want to overnight. I usually get recognized by quite a few people at events uh, like this one, uh, particularly lately. Well, here we are, the largest RV show in America, or so they say. Tampa says it's the biggest, but these, these people, they've got the names. I'm going to begin by checking out the Giant Center which is a lot less crowded than I expected, but hey, it's still early. It is a lot quieter than I, guess, than I expected. I expected to see more people here, but it's early. I guess it'll get busier later. 
Here I also get to hang out with the nice folks at Micro Air. I'll put a link to that video if you are interested. Travelingrobert.com slash easy start. And don't forget the discount code MYRV for a 25% discount. I also met up with Eric and Tammy Johnson of TechnoRV.com. And I am also an affiliate, so TravelingRobert.com slash TechnoRV will let them know that I sent you. Then the vast outdoor area. I was originally going to be here for four days and now I've only got four hours. So I'm only going to show you a few of my favorites and because I made a much longer video of the whole show. My favorite this time around is the Pleasure Way Lexer, as we realize that at this stage in our lives we prefer the flexibility of a proper class B, even if it can be hard to live long term in such close quarters. Our favorite is actually the TS floor plan, although here I am showing you the FL model. Here we have the wet bath, but it's a pretty sizable one if you, as you can see, the same large sink propane stove, here's a convection microwave, the same uh, domestic refrigerator we saw on the XLTS, and back here is a very similar deal. I, I call this the, the XLTS Mini because you have the bed here and then, let me show you, we fit east, west or north, north, south, I don't know exactly how they call it, so that's, it's perfect. I fit completely back here in this sofa and that's the deal maker for this Pro Master chassis instead of the of the sprinter where it's just a couple of inches too, too, too narrow. Okay, let's get out of here. A lot of people are waiting to see this one. Uh, let's check out the Bambi. A lot of people have asked about the Bambi and this is the Bambi Flying Cloud 19CB. Well, if we wanted to keep on going the travel trailer route, which we're not really, and if money was no object, which it definitely is, I would probably go for something like this. Let's see the bathroom, because they usually have a... Okay, this is a pretty clever solution. It's a dry bath. And then, if you put it this way, I guess you have some privacy in there. Or you can have it that way and have more room. Here's the sink on the outside. Three burner stove. This is a very cool unit because you have a permanent bed and a permanent table so if you have different schedules you can both work at the same time and uh, sixty thousand dollars for a 19 cb well that's all i'm going to cover in this particular video because as i said i made a much longer one just about the show and now it is a two-hour drive to philadelphia where ely is flying this evening and now we're going to switch gears in the next portion of this trip, we are going to focus on some of the larger cities and how to RV in them. And let me tell you, each one is different. Two years ago, I showed you how we were able to park in the middle of Chicago. Now we're going to do the same in Philly, although I am going to show you all that on the next video. Enjoy the ride.